the entire reason he wants this only painted as an insurrection, even though nobody's ever been charged with an insurrection, even though Trump was cleared of inciting an insurrection, is so that he can make justifications for why the other side seconds. deserves what it gets because they're a bunch of traitors. Because you're saying that my <laughs> definition of insurrection isn't valid because it also applies to riots, and I'm telling you very clearly, no, it doesn't. So they all grab their blunts and they start toking up in protest. Ten seconds. Right? And then Ten they seconds. start a fire what do you have? and I kick need, some okay. stuff. And kick so some stuff. Do you think... Is that, that, hang on, I just want to make sure. You think... It could that be, yes. That would be yes. an insurrection. The historical record, it could be, yes. The other day, Destiny debated famous paleoconservative debate bro Andrew Wilson on the topic of if January 6th was an insurrection. I feel like both sides made a lot of strange missteps in the debate, but also some good points. So we're going to go through that, point them out. We're here today to debate if the events of the January 6th Capitol riots were an insurrection or if they weren't. Simple. It's a simple debate prompt. They either were or they weren't. Oh, Andrew, you sweet summer child. <laughs> On its face, you would think that that would be a simple debate prompt until you realize that neither the Constitution nor federal law actually precisely gives a definition of what insurrection is, which Andrew notes. Looking into the idea of insurrection itself, it isn't exactly clear what the meaning of it is. It does always seem to be tied together with violence or some will to overthrow a government law, government system, government itself, or resistance to that law or something akin to this. So we're left using dictionary definitions. As Andrew notes, it always has to do with overthrowing some law or some rebellion against the government, but it's not exactly clear. And depending what dif dictionary definition you use, it can kind of vary. So we'll see how this goes. The relevant section is in Title 18 of the United States Code, Section 2383, under the title Rebellion or Insurrection. Whoever incites, sets on foot, assists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof, or gives aid or comfort thereto, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both, and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. So the only part of U.S. law that specifically tells us what an insurrection is just uses the word insurrection, says that anyone who's guilty of an insurrection is someone who has done an insurrection and then can't hold office. But then that key point is what is insurrection, which will make this debate a shit show. Andrew then plays a clip of past Destiny talking about how J6 wasn't an insurrection. In fact, Destiny in 2021 completely agreed with my current assessment. Please, if you don't mind, play clip one. Do you think the majority of the people there were were actually trying to do that and all they managed to do was like kill like one woman got shot by the cops? You're fucking delusional. I think most of the people probably showed up to protest because they were fucking mad and then shit got riled up. They were probably almost for sure, I would say, some genuine bad actors there that had fantasies yep. of invading the fucking capital and shit. Now, I think I heard from the FBI that it was like 5% or less had some plan to do something. Even that number sounds a little bit high because 5% of however many thousand people, there's a lot of people. But I don't think every single person who went there, their goal was to destroy the White House or to destroy the Capitol building and take it over. But because if they were, we would have saw way more shit. This is kind of a problem though, because people can change their minds and this is easy for Destiny to address, which he does later in the debate. If it's On a non sequitur, then you in 2021 were using a non sequitur when you made the argument that from the appearance of this, it could not have been an insurrection. 2021 destiny was incorrect because 2021 destiny mm -hmm. didn't have the historical context to understand an insurrection if you want to bring him on here and talk to him you can i, I am talking agree with him. everything you're that not, I not you're you. not i am 2024 destiny i have learned more things i have done more studying i've read more papers and i've done more research on this <laughs> okay. in fact destiny even agrees such writing political violence is part of the democratic process akin to voting he says he said this to justify the George Floyd or BLM riots, that such riots were just one side of the Democrat coin and baked in to our Democrat process. The tail's in and just the other half of democracy, he says. Of course, he later denied this. Please play clip two. A disingenuous sack of shit. Because, as I've debated you in the past, you started talking before January 6th ever occurred about how the BLM riots were justified. It was just the other side of the coin of voting. Of course, once you realized that grip wouldn't do as well for you when you were debating the Rittenhouse shit, you completely 180 your position. All did I ever, hold on, did I ever say writing is the other side of the coin of voting? Probably did. That's, that's a really strange statement, statement if I did. If I did, that's a really strange statement, but go ahead, okay. I will try to find the clip. Activism and riots are one side of the coin and the other side is voting. This is a troublesome clip because of the other side of the democratic process of voting is rioting, then it's hard to see rioting as something that contravenes the laws and rebels against those laws. So I feel like this is like a hard one to get out of. Destiny needs to be able to provide us with what an insurrection actually is, an actual working legal definition or even a personal one so we can work off of that to understand the mindset of a person who claims this was an insurrection even as nobody ultimately is prosecuted for an insurrection. He, to date, hasn't done this. 
for the same reason the Supreme Court and higher courts won't. If they do define it strictly and categorize it strictly, then it's likely Democrats and even Republicans are engaging in them all the time. Nonstop, in fact. I am, in fact, willing to, in the ultimate spirit of good faith, concede that if destiny just can't really define an insurrection or tell us what goes into that category and not into the category of a riot, that he really has no business calling anybody an insurrectionist, especially when nobody's been charged with an insurrection in regards to J6. Nobody, and certainly not convicted. This is the most troubling part of the debate, and it's something that Andrew Wilson says, and Destiny doesn't seem to know the relevant details about this, which is strange because he's really booked up on January 6th, or maybe he doesn't realize that these things are basically tantamount. But yes, nobody's been charged with insurrection in January 6th, but more than 1,230 people have been charged as of this year with things like obstruction of justice, assaulting a police officer, and most importantly, seditious conspiracy. This is like notably true for members of the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, which was, I think there were six charges of seditious conspiracy in general with like incredibly lengthy prison sentences. And if we look at seditious conspiracy, that is defined under, under Title 18 of the U.S. Code, which is to conspire to overthrow, put down, or to destroy by force the government of, Uni of the United States, or to levy war against them, or to oppose by force the authority thereof, or by force to prevent, hinder, or delay the execution of any law of the United States. So while it's true that no one was charged with insurrection, this is because insurrection, as I've noted, is a nebulous charge and is not defined under U.S. law. The charge that you get if you do an insurrection is the charge of seditious conspiracy. This is the charge that Puerto Rican nationalists got when they stormed the Capitol in 1954 and opened fire. This is the charge that was brought against members of the Hutari militia when they plotted to incite an uprising against the government in 2010. And this is the charge that was brought against Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman and nine other Islamic militants when they plotted to bomb New York City landmarks in the 1990s. So yes, nobody was technically charged with insurrection because that's not the charge that you get. I feel like Andrew is just using a talking point that used to be true like a couple of, a couple of years after this happened nobody had been yet charged with seditious conspiracy but that point age like milk because now we've had many charges and convictions and sentencing of people charged with seditious conspiracy and this point will get brought up again and again and again by Andrew that if it was an insurrection they'd be charged with an insurrection which you could still try to technically argue because no charge of insurrection was brought but a charge of insurrection is basically never brought I don't I don't think there's been a single modern insurrection charge in US history it's always seditious conspiracy and also if we look at Trump Trump himself was charged with three serious allegations in the third indictment against him, which was a conspiracy to defraud the United States by using dishonesty, fraud, and deceit to impair, obstruct, and defeat the lawful federal government function. There's a conspiracy to corruptly obstruct and impede the January 6th congressional proceedings at which the collected results of the presidential election are counted and certified. And there's a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have one's vote counted. So while it's technically true that none of these people were charged and convicted with insurrection, it's quite misleading. Now, I will note that this also, conversely, doesn't mean that it was an insurrection, but it just plays against Andrew's point. Because in the, in the January 6th riots, the conviction rate is roughly 50%. But this is substantially lower than normal federal charges. Roughly 91.4% of federal charges, according to Pew Research, are convicted and sentenced. So somebody could say that this is perhaps evidence of overcharging, that these charges are overbrought and they're not, they're not representative of what you'd normally get. And that's a fair point. But the whole point of if it's an insurrection, how come no one was charged for insurrection kind of rings hollow. I will concede, however, if he concedes Democrats are likely involved in insurrections all the time, using violence for political change, I'll concede Republicans may be as well if his definition is that broad. However, that will eliminate his moral high ground for the justification of do what you want to them because they're traitors. That would also make you a traitor. I think this is probably Andrew's strongest point is that if the Republicans are going to be charged with insurrection in this case, then Democrats could also be charged. And now Destiny might want to concede this, but he might not want to because you need to you need to have a definition of insurrection that is broad enough to encompass certain things, but narrow enough to exclude other things. Because you don't want every violent riot that has a purpose to be listed as an insurrection, but you don't want actual insurrections to just get labeled as riots. And so it's kind of a hard balance to strike. And I don't think Destiny ends up striking a, a good balance. So Destiny then goes on to lay out his definition of insurrection, which has four vital elements. Uh, an insurrection includes four vital elements. One is an assemblage. 
meaning a group of people that have come together. Two is resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Three is you have to do this by way of force or intimidation. And four is it has to be through a for a for a public concern or a public cause, not a private thing that one might be interested in. Then Destiny goes on to explain more precisely about how an insurrection can be used to change laws or conduct. Um, <clears throat> In terms of whether or not they were uh, resisting a law or interfering with the cause of government, um, we can quote here, uh, an insurrection against the United States requires resistance to any statute or some public law of the United States. Um, this is a quote by a uh, judge um, in, I think, 1826. Uh, Curtis uh, spoke this to a jury. He says, the law does not distinguish between a purpose to prevent the execution of one or several or all laws. Uh, an insurrection could be directed at a legislature as well as at executive officials. And then when we say, this is a common one as well, why was no one charged with an insurrection? Uh, people can be charged or couldn't be charged with crimes for a variety of reasons, but for purposes of the 14th Amendment, nothing in there requires the criminal conviction of the crime of insurrection, only that an insurrection occurred and that one engaged in it or aided it. Destiny, instead of going into the seditious conspiracy stuff, which I think he doesn't know about, he then goes on to say that just because no one was charged with the crime doesn't mean a crime has happened, which is true. But to Andrew's point, you would think if that if the crime has happened and that's whatever he's going to call it, then those charges would be would be laid. But again, those charges were laid, the seditious conspiracy charges. Yeah, so let's start with this idea of my definition. What the hell do I care about your definition? Nobody has been prosecuted for any insurrection by any definition. The issue that's going to come up a lot is the issue of definition, which ends up being strange because Andrew says no one's been prosecuted under any definition. But the the definition that I read about seditious conspiracy sounds pretty similar to any definition that we'd use about insurrection because it's the charge that's used. So first of all, under Destiny's definition, people have been charged. And then under the definition of seditious conspiracy, people have also been charged. I think Andrew's under the impression that people have only been charged with rioting. Or if he knows about the conspiracy charges, he thinks that Destiny won't know about it. But that's a dangerous game to play in the debate. Destiny comes through and he gives us this list. He says, one, an assemblage. Okay. Two, resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Okay. Three, by force or intimidation. Okay. Four, for a public purpose. He has just outlined basically almost every single political riot I've ever heard of. That is what that is outlined. So let's see an assemblage. This would cover a riot, a bunch of people assembling. Resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Uh, that could be shutting down roadways for commerce. That could mean anything. By force or intimidating, if you have Black Lives Matter, other groups like this who are out there saying no justice, no peace, that would be very intimidating. And then for public purpose, very nebulous. All of this is completely nebulous language. The, B the BLM thing is going to come up again and again. And I do think it's a fair point because I think it's, it's hard for Destiny to create a definition of insurrection that's precise that won't apply to certain BLM protests and will apply to January 6th. Obviously, January 6th is a bigger scale, but when you have things like bombing courthouses or trying to get certain convictions overturned or trying to get certain convictions to happen, that really seems like all of the elements of insurrection are being met there. It just doesn't seem severe enough. But this issue of severe enough is exactly kind of, I think, Andrew's point. We want to say that an, an insurrection has to meet certain criteria. It has to, it has to either have a chance of succeeding or be really trying to overthrow something it feels intuitively that we know that that has to be the case that if i just go out tomorrow and i bring one other guy with me and i just like go and just like attack my local congress with like with like i don't know the, my fists like i feel like that's not going to meet the criteria even if it's like even if it's like planned out and even if there's threats of violence even if there's intention that feels like most people would say like are we going to call that an insurrection? Is this a historical insurrection? It feels like it has to meet a certain bar of severity. I think we all know that, but when you get into definitions, it's it's really hard to talk about. To, it's really hard to not connect it to a results-based thing. I think an insurrection has to have some chance of like a major disruption or some chance of working for it to actually be an insurrection. I don't think just a random plot that's not at all thought out and not at all calculated and not at all severe with a bunch of people knowing about it, a bunch of people acting, it's hard to call that an insurrection, just in common parlance. He says that these elements, third element, self-evident Colorado Supreme Court using 1776 signs, people use 1776 signs all the time and have 
absolutely no interest in any type of rebellion whatsoever. It's very common for people to have those as bumper stickers. That doesn't mean that they're going to be engaging in any kind of rebellion or insurrection at all. I think Andrew Wilson's being a bit bad faith here because like, yes, people use 1776 signs all the time, but in this context, it obviously means something. Just like when he said with BLM that, oh, they're saying no justice, no peace. Well, people could use that all the time. That could be in song lyrics. It's like, yeah, but in a specific context, words have different meanings. So yeah, I would say 1776 bringing signs like that would indicate that you want some type of revolution to occur. Obviously, insurrection seems to have something to do with levying war against the United States, or at least some type of start to levy war against the United States. This is the closest definition we get from Andrew. And while it's like imprecise, I actually think it's good. And it gets to what I was saying earlier, that it has to be either some type of war against the US or a start to wage war, which is why me and just two buddies doing an effete plot to do something like stupid to get some law changed is not gonna like be an insurrection in anyone's mind. It's it's just silly. It has to be like this, it has to be the start of war. It has to have this violence, this uprising. It has to be like something more. So unless Destiny is going to concede that anything which meets this criteria is an insurrection, uh, then I'm, I'm not even sure how to go forward with this debate. How in the world can he say essentially almost any riot on planet Earth uh, or any Ten assemblage, seconds. even a peaceful protest where they shut down the roads is an insurrection? That can't be true. Yeah, and this is the problem because the key thing in Destiny's point Destiny doesn't want to have to commit to violence being like a necessary condition. The January 6th stuff, there was violence, but you would look at things like past Destiny said where there's not many weapons brought. They would have done a lot more. A lot of them are just like there to just like be wild, it seems, and to just support Trump. So you have to, you, he wants it to be the threat of violence, but the problem is the threat of violence that can apply to so many things then. Because anytime you have a mass group of people that are angry about something, this is a threat of violence or violence. Look at the Stonewall riots when people are fighting for LGBTQ rights. That would meet all of these criteria. That's an assemblage of people that are coming for a specific purpose to overthrow specific laws and are using both violence and the threat of violence. But would we call that an insurrection? It's a protest, it's a riot. Is it an insurrection? Like, I feel like most people don't want to commit to that. So yes, if Destiny just says, sure, all these things are insurrections, then I guess it's like, okay, fine, January 6th was one too. But I think the issue is people want to say that January 6th is uniquely a resurrection in, uniquely a resurrection, <laughs> Freudian slip there, <laughs> was uniquely an insurrection in ways that things like BLM and the Stonewall protests were not. I think if we just want to say that insurrections happen, you know, multiple times a year throughout the continental United States, then sure. But I feel like that's not what this, that's not what the topic of this debate is going for. The topic of this debate is going for in a unique way that this was like some historic moment, not just that an insurrection happens every fucking Tuesday. Uh, BLM almost automatically fails on the fact that these were not usually demonstrations against federal law. Uh, I don't know the federal law or the federal thing that was being resisted by BLM. Um, but again, I'm happy to dive into any particular BLM supposed insurrection or riot uh, if you'd like. But again, I, I mean, that has nothing to do with January 6th. And if you want, then you can see that entire argument. And we can move on to analyzing individual BLM instances. These were absolutely demonstrations against federal law and the practice and carrying out of that law. The, the whole thing of BLM, a lot of it was wanting convictions overturned, was wanting convictions to happen, was saying this person should be charged with this and these people shouldn't be charged with this. The whole defund the police, there are laws that say what funding police get and what they don't get. Like this is this is clearly about about overturning federal law. Like there's I think this is such a strange argument from Destiny. And again, I get if Destiny wants to say that BLM as a whole was was kind of non-specific and it was just this bubbling up of 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 rage that had happened from a from a minority group. But then we look at specific cases. There were specific goals in mind, and there were specific events of like firebombing the courthouse, as I said, attacking police officers. There was a lot of things where it's like these were actions carried out with a goal in mind. He said he keeps going back to this illogical idea that just because X doesn't happen doesn't mean X isn't true. Yeah, that's true, but it also doesn't mean X is true. So making the claim that, well, wait a second, Andrew, just because they weren't actually charged with insurrection doesn't mean they weren't guilty of insurrection. Well, that's nice, but it doesn't mean they were either. And I have the evidence on my side as none of them were actually prosecuted 
for insurrection. None of them were prosecuted for insurrection, and Trump was acquitted for inciting insurrection. Of course not, but Destiny isn't saying that. He's rebutting your point by stating that a charge doesn't need to be levied in order for the crime to have been committed. Obviously, Destiny isn't saying that, well, because there was no charge, then that means one did happen. He's just responding to your claim. There are plenty of riots that aren't riots to resist, like the implementation of a law or to interfere necessarily with like some government proceeding. We can imagine a million reasons why people might riot outside of a baseball game. People might riot um, in protest to a statement that was made or in, in relation to, um, I don't know, the outcome of a sporting event. Like there's tons of people that can riot that aren't rioting with the goal of resisting the implementation of a particular law or trying to interfere with the course of some uh, government proceeding. So the, the part two, the second element I've listed really wouldn't comport with um, with most riots. Um, and then the third one is uh, the third element by force or intimidation. Um, I would say that riots generally have a forceful or intimidating aspect to them, although they generally happen spontaneously. Usually they're not planned in advance to use like force or intimidation. Um, so uh, <clears throat> to quote uh, Justice Greer, uh, quote, legal authorities carefully distinguished planned insurrections from spontaneous riots. Uh, Justice, Robert, Justice Robert Greer charged the grand jury in the United States v. Hanway that a defendant who was not leagued with violent resistors to federal law could not be prosecuted for treason. Uh, Greer insisted that spontaneous riots were not insurrections, that insurrections required a commitment to use force to resist law, not spur of the moment violence. Most riots just kind of like happen. Uh, it's pretty rare that they are planned in advance. And I think we all agree that if they are planned in advance, it takes on a much different character and arguably uh, could call under it like different types of crimes. If people uh, you know, engage in rioting, it's not good. But if people are literally planning it out in advance, we're calling in a whole bunch of different crimes there than just the simple thing of calling a particular thing a riot. So like BLM might riot against like police violence, but what is the, there's not like a particular federal statute or federal law there. The most this does is just limit which riots would be insurrections. It would mean that, yeah, if you're rioting after a sports game, that you're just rioting for the sake of rioting and there's no specific goal. But this still would leave many riots under the category of insurrection, and that's the problem. I would also argue that it's hard to know, based on the sheer tiny amount of weapons that were brought, considering America's so armed, and especially the GOP members are so armed, that you have so few weapons it's hard to know if we're if we're going to say that violence can't be spontaneous and has to be planned i don't know if j6 would fall into that it's i think most of the violence that happened on january 6th was spontaneous at least for most people i mean and if we're going to say that some people yes we know that some people had planned violence well then we're back to every riot there's a bunch of riots the people that are firebombing courthouses they didn't just happen to have molotov cocktails in their hand they obviously planned out to do violence it wasn't just like oh i'm walking down the street now i spontaneously want to firebomb a courthouse so obviously in all of these violent riots somebody is planning stuff and other people are doing spontaneous violence but that's also true of january 6th i'm going to use your own logic back to you just because they weren't charged with an insurrection doesn't mean it wasn't an insurrection. Oh, okay. Well, they were actually charged with uh, elements of rioting. So I'm going to say it was actually rioting. And I'm also going to say that, wait a second, your definition here seems to be more about rioting than anything else by your own claim. Again, not to harp on it, but they were charged with rioting. And some people were charged with seditious conspiracy. But also, just because something fits the definition of a riot doesn't mean it's not an insurrection. And Destiny points this out, saying that every insurrection starts as a riot. In fact, the, the Supreme Court of Colorado, when they were talking about this, they, they, they have these three categories. They have riots, insurrections, and rebellions. And each one is a subset of the other one. It's kind of like having animals, mammals, and dogs. Each one is a specific subcategory of the other one and specifies more what it is. But all dogs are mammals and all mammals are animals. But it wouldn't be correct to say, well, this better de meets the definition of an animal, so it's not a dog. No, it, it has to meet the definition of an animal and then a mammal to be a dog. <laughs> Breaking a law and resisting law are not the same thing. Usually when people riot, they're not rioting with the purpose of making arson or murder or um, or, or whatever other crimes are being broken to make those legal things. Usually they're breaking laws, not with the intent of like resisting the implementation or the execution of those laws or resisting or uh, contravening the execution of like some function of government. This gets strange because now we get into this strange debate about is resisting the law the same as breaking 
a law which is absolutely a point for destiny because breaking a law is not resisting a law. If someone just steals from something, they're not trying to like overthrow stealing. So I, I think that's a little silly. But of course, the counter to this is that many riots are for the purpose of fixing a law, which Andrew will bring up in a little bit with people smoking cannabis in front of courthouses. But then Andrew later on, and we'll show the clip, concedes to Destiny's point. So I think he realizes. Do you think that resisting a law is the same thing as breaking a law? Uh, I think that it could be synonymous inside of people's minds, but no, I could see the distinction with merit. In fact, each point, he concedes on point one, an assemblage that would fit a riot. An assemblage would fit a riot. That's point one. He agrees. Okay. Point three, by force or intimidation, uh, intimidation, he agrees on point three that that is a riot. He agrees on point four. He conceded on that as well. And then he just conceded on point two. He couldn't exactly tell us why resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding wouldn't fit a riot. Of course it fits a riot. All of these, in fact, fit the events of January 6th perfectly. This part's a bit wrong-headed. I, I see what he's saying, but it seems a bit confused. Because, again, one is a subset of the other. So, yes, you can find some riots that meet all four points of that. because all, And then we would call those an insurrection. And those are insurrection and riots. But why I think he has a point is there are many riots that do meet all these four points that we would not want to call an insurrection. That it feels like it does not meet the severity of which we would say, you know, okay, that's an insurrection. I think these definitions are best thought of as like, these are indicators it could be an insurrection. But I think there has to be that additional element of severity. There has to be some severity there. If there's not severity, I feel like you don't have it. So I think this is something that you can try to define and then... And then it still has to reach that like critical threshold of either the amount of people or the amount of success or the amount of violence. There has to be something else because everything that we call an insurrection has an, an additional factor. It's not, it's not just these light cases. In fact, that's why most people weren't charged with seditious conspiracy. That's why only like key members of the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers were charged with seditious conspiracy. Otherwise, you would have charged like 1,200 people with seditious conspiracy. But most of them got like rioting charges or disorderly conduct because most of them weren't trying to like do something specific. It was only the people that had specific plans to really overturn things, to really, and it was, it was, it met a severe criteria of long standing planning and premeditated and violence and all of this stuff. All these things had to be met to bring a case against just six people. There's a reason it wasn't applied to everybody. And so again, I think that the entire reason he wants this only painted as an insurrection, even though nobody's ever been charged with an insurrection, even though Trump was cleared of inciting an insurrection, is so that he can make justifications for why the other side seconds. deserves what it gets because they're a bunch of traitors. I do think this is definitely true. I think it's, it's not a coincidence that this debate is happening, you know, a few days after Destiny's absolutely unhinged you know, Twitter demonstrations and YouTube demonstrations against Trump supporters. I, I don't think it's relevant on what Destiny's motives are, but I do think that these are his motives. I think by by painting Trump as an insurrectionist, and then he could say that all of Trump's supporters are treasonous, and therefore everything is justified against them. So I do think that's the motive, but I also think the motive doesn't matter. While the motivation isn't isn't a fair logical argument. I still get why it was being brought up repeatedly because I think Destiny's best point would be to say, okay, the Jordan Neely thing was an insurrection and the Stonewall riots were also insurrections and BLM firebombing courthouses and calling for defunding the police. That was also an insurrection. It kind of like, it kind of steals the thunder away from J6, you know? We then get into some historical examples of insurrection from Destiny. Nobody had any issues at the time charging people with crimes of insurrection. Nobody had any confusion at the time historically. Um, maybe there were Shays' rebellions, the Whiskey Insurrection, the Burr Insurrection, John Brown's raids. Um, you had convictions of, um, you know, like a Pennsylvania farmer, uh, I think, set fire to a house of a tax collector in 1794. He was charged with a insurrection. Um, John Fries and Friends made a show of arms that resulted in the release of persons charged with federal tax evasion. That was considered an insurrection uh, in 1847 when his Hispanic and Native Americans attacked occupying American officials in New Mexico. That was considered an insurrection. 
insurrection in 1851 when Pennsylvanians obstructed official efforts to capture an alleged fugitive slave. That was an insurrection in 1856 um, when there were uh, rival forces in the United States that were violently resisting the laws on slavery. That was considered insurrection. Um, these aren't just like riots where people are like, we're mad and we're breaking the law by being violent. It was they were resisting the law. They were resisting an actual like federal law claiming that that particular law shouldn't exist. They were trying to air a public grievance through force or intimidation with an assembled group of people in the in the in the goal of like overturning that particular thing through violent action. Now, the problem with these is that these are pre-modern. All of these examples are pre-modern. And there's a reason for that, because when stuff was like when society was less stable, obviously these things were able to rise to the level of severity more often. You're able to have maybe 600 to 1,000 militiamen doing something. You're able to have these big events, whereas these big events don't really happen nowadays. And so, yeah, there was like a, a serious risk of the country being lost. And I don't think that's as common today. And so I think that's the reason that we have to like punt back into history to pull examples where these people were charged with high treason. And again, that, that would be the highest thing. You know, the, a lot of the examples, destiny names, these people weren't charged with insurrection. They were charged with high treason. And nobody in January 6th was charged with high treason. That, that would be like the highest standard. And so maybe if Andrew wants to argue that, that people would have been charged with treason, if for it to be an insurrection, I think that would be more fair. The crime of X is different than the event of X. And right now we're talking about if January 6th was an insurrection, not did any individual person engage in the criminal behavior of insurrection. That would be a separate conversation. If we want to have that conversation, we could. See, I, I get that's not the debate title, but for me, that's the salient point of this is did anyone engage in insurrection? And if so, how many? Because you, an insurrection to happen, it has to be everyone with some type of goal, you would think. It can't just be a bunch of people just doing some shit. So I feel like to say it, it did an insurrection happen, that is like so much more nebulous. Because then are we looking at Trump? Did Trump instigate an insurrection? Did he want violence to happen? Because if Trump didn't want violence, then you could say Trump isn't responsible for an insurrection at all. No insurrection happened. Or did just the certain people commit insurrection? Like usually that's the thing with the, these historical examples. These historical examples, usually everyone was united on what they wanted to do and how they wanted to achieve it. Here it's it's confusing. It, it's You have some people there for, for reasons of just supporting Trump. Probably a lot of people don't even know about like the electorate scheme. You have Trump himself, who maybe just wanted people to protest, or maybe he wanted people to put pressure on Mike Pence, right? We, we, we don't know, and it gets muddled that your motivation is just to demonize the opposition. Sure, but this isn't a debate over my motivation. I could be motivated by 100 million different bad faith factors, and literally none of them would be relevant to this conversation. It could yeah. be the fact that the DNC actually paid me money to give this precise argument, and Kamala is on the phone with me right now, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't have any impact on this particular debate. We then get into motivation again, and definitely a point for destiny. Well, I think Andrew has a correct point. I think it's an irrelevant point. It truly doesn't matter. This is a debate. So it's kind of a weird appeal to emotionality that Andrew's doing that seems uncharacteristic of him because Andrew himself has argued many things that he might not even believe in and he's just arguing and so it's like the motivation or what is like impelling destiny to do this has absolutely no bearing on the correctness of the stuff he's saying just because again you engage in unlawful conduct doesn't mean that you're trying to resist like the implementation of the carrying out the resisting the law I mean there's many examples again where things try to resist the implementation of a law like we have the the killing of Jordan Neely that happened in in 2023, right? The guy that had that was in a put in a chokehold on a bus by an ex or on a on a subway by the ex marine, and ended up dying. And initially, it said that there was going to be no charges filed, and then a bunch of people protested and rioted, and then charges were filed. So that riot that was a planned riot that was trying to resist the implementation of the law of self-defense that it was to say now it might not have been self-defense but the the goal of it was definitely to put pressure on the prosecutors to prosecute and to say this was not self-defense and this is actually something that we're going to prosecute for so whatever you think of that that would meet criteria of it then why would a person call a protest on january 6th what do you think they were protesting what do you mean they they call protest people call protests all the time that doesn't mean that the we're not talking about protest other protests I'm asking you, what the that's the problem you would have to show that trump is calling them to do violence if violence or the threat of violence is part of it you'd have to show that trump wants to call or threaten for violence and i'm not sure if we have that we know that trump wanted them to protest and we know that that was Trump's purpose, was to get people to protest. What was the purpose of the seconds, protest on January seconds. 6th? The purpose of the protest was to go out and show support for Donald J. Trump. For what? 
Well, there, there was a variety of reasons. I think. No, that give me, me. Wait, wait. Are you telling me we can't? I'm going to give you a variety of reasons. You can't say no, no, no. Are you saying there wasn't a variety of reasons why people didn't show up? Nope. I think there was one clear reason. Oh, there's only one reason why everybody showed up. Ten seconds. Correct. Ten seconds. But, okay. What is the one clear reason? There was not a variety of reasons. Some people didn't show up just because they wanted to see what was happening. Some people didn't show up just to support the president. Some All people right, didn't show time. up because that they really time. liked to go to protest. Everybody showed up for one reason, right? I didn't say everybody. Everybody showed up for one reason. I said they were called so, there for one quick, reason. Guys, and that was to quick. protest the certification of the election. Yeah, guys, guys, guys. So I'll, I'll yeah, I ha so I have a problem with him ascribing motivation to all. all. He says one there's minute. one clear reason why everybody showed up. That's clearly not true. That doesn't even logically make sense. He could never demonstrate in a million years that there was only one clear reason why everybody showed up. That's a nonsensical argument, Destiny. That's not the argument that I'm making. If the, if that the was the argument was, you made. If that is the argument he made, though. He said that they're all there for one purpose. That is not true. You could say that there is one purpose that Trump wants them to do, but everybody's not there for one purpose. The, d the debate is whether or not January 6th is an insurrection, not did every single person on January 6th engage in the crime of insurrection, or did every single person on January 6th go with the intent to then commit an insurrection? Why did you say there was one clear reason I why I said that there was a up. clear reason why people were called seconds. there because there was. I mean, and this is a key thing. I think many, many people's purposes there was just to su support Donald J. Trump. They, they could have, he, he could have told them, meet me on February 8th for some random reason, and a bunch of people would have gone. Like, yes, again, Trump's motive was one thing, but now we have the people's motive, and not everybody was there for the same thing. It seems like the average person that was there that was charged with obstruction of justice could have just been there. Like Andrew said, some people like rioting, some people like protesting, some people are there, there to support Trump, and then the people that were charged with seditious conspiracy were probably up to no good. We're probably up to some bad things. Either one, you claim, wait a second, there's one clear reason everybody showed up, or two, no, there was no clear reason why everybody showed up. They had multiple motivations, even if Trump himself had a different motivation. This is illogical argumentation. Yeah, and that's definitely true, and that's why it would be an easier topic about did 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 any one person engage in insurrection as opposed to was the event an insurrection? Because you have so many moving parts of, you have the motivation of the people organizing it, like the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. You have the people that are just showing up and engaging in it and are just, you know, running into the Capitol. You have people that, you have, you have Trump himself, who's like, planning out people to meet but then not telling them to go into the Capitol. Do you have the people that told them to go into the Capitol? Who, like, it starts to get a little confusing when you have so many different motivations. And again, this is utterly not like historic insurrections where there is one clear goal in mind and usually a united front that's trying to achieve that goal. So when you're talking about this from a logical standpoint, when you say, oh, if somebody called and said, hey, we're all going to blow this building up. Yes, I would agree that you could probably ascribe the motivation to it then. Can you show me a, treat, a tweet or any type of anything from Donald Trump saying, hey, guys, show up. We're going to do an insurrection. No, you just yes, made the shit I up. Can. OK, fine. So I can. So as part of Donald Trump's speech, I'll give you two quotes. Our country has had enough. We will not take it anymore. And that's what this is all about. And use a favorite term that all you people really came up with. We will stop the steal. Today, I will lay out just some of the evidence proving that we won this election. And we won it by a landslide. This was not a close election. The first quote, the second quote, we must stop the steal. And then we must ensure that such outrageous election fraud never happens again, can never be allowed to happen again. When he says stop the steal, when they're at the Capitol building on January 6th, and when the election is being certified, what does stop the steal mean there? Yeah, this is a little silly for Andrew, because yes, he's, Andrew seems to want to Trump to say, like, oh, go do an insurrection on January 6th, which obviously didn't happen. And if that's his standard, well, there's no, nothing that's going to meet that. So I think Destiny correctly points out what he thinks is indications that Trump wanted to do an insurrection. You don't have to use the word insurrection to do an insurrection, obviously. Uh, wait a second. So first of all, you're attributing to Donald Trump's rhetoric here uh, something which he may not have intended. None of that actually shows or demonstrates that he was calling for an insurrection on the Capitol. You are just kind of ascribing that motivation onto it for the purposes of convenience. You have to show me there where he calls, like your example was, if I say we're all going to show up and blow up this building, that was your example, and then people show up and do it, we can understand their motivation. I agree. You have to show me where he says, okay, guys, we're all going to show up and do an insurrection. You can't then take words that don't say anything about an insurrection and say, but I think he meant that. That, though so then just before i answer this what would i have to show you to show that an insurrection was what trump was planning what kind you would of have to would give you me need? the you would have to give me the criteria first and foremost of something which fit the criteria of an insurrection better than some other thing and you would have to make it refutable to that thing 
from what people were charged under. So if the if the criteria is, I'm going to give you what I think an insurrection is, and it fits a different criteria better than an insurrection, and and under that criteria, that's what people were basically charged under, then it sounds like the other thing makes more sense than an insurrection. See, point for Destiny, but Destiny doesn't even know he's getting the point. Well, in some ways he does, in some ways he doesn't, because... He, I, Destiny understands that just because something meets a riot doesn't mean insurrection. At least I think he does, because he said every insurrection starts as a riot. So it's nonsensical to say that if it meets the definition of something else better, then it's that thing. But also then we're back to the charges, where they weren't just charged with rioting. They're charged with seditious, seditious conspiracy, whereas people and all these other riots are not. Now, you can say that that's prosecutor, prosecutorial misconduct, you can argue that these were like politically motivated charges. I, I think that's a fair argument to look into and to make, but then you'd have to analyze that. And then that would go back to, did any individual commit insurrection? So just up to this point, you've given me no we definition of insurrection. You seem unwilling to commit. It's not my burden. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying you've given me no, no I'm definition not gonna, of insurrection. I'm not, I'm you seem unwilling to do so. It's so then my, my question would be, can you give me a, a riot? Burden. Can you give me a riot that would fit all four points that I've given not of my what I've defined in insurrection? Well, then you must accept my definition of insurrection. I don't need you're to saying that, accept. Saying Why would I need to accept your definition? I don't understand how it's not Andrew's burden. I get that Destiny's the one saying that it's an insurrection. But once the conversation happens, surely at some point the burden has to flip over. Otherwise, you can just say, I don't accept that definition. Well, what's your definition? Well, it's not my burden. Now give me a new one. Okay, I'll give you a new one. No, I don't accept that one either. You could go on endlessly. Like, you could just, like, there, there would be no way to have a productive discussion. You have to either agree to his definition or you have to provide your own, which Andrew almost partway did by talking about the severity angle of it and that it's waging war against it, but then he's not willing to really commit to anything, which is just like a slippery tactic. Because you're saying that my <laughs> definition of insurrection isn't valid because it also applies to riots, and I'm telling you very clearly, no, it doesn't. But Destiny is also wrong here because the definition does apply to riots. This is what's confusing about this, this thing with Destiny. Destiny seems to acknowledge that riots that insurrection is a subset of riots but then he's saying no it doesn't apply to riots well it does it doesn't apply to all riots but then by definition it applies to some riots and there's some things that we have called riots that it also applies to in a state when we're talking about a, an insurrection that happened well then on can the you show grounds. me in your definition where it says it must be federal for an insurrection i don't need to, to we're talking about insurrection well then if it doesn't it grounds. doesn't matter so then any any of the criteria which would apply at the state level would still apply at the federal level for rioting it's the same I thing i don't know if insurrections are state defined i'm not aware of that in the historical record well, you, you can't have a state insurrection can... why I, couldn't i'm you? not aware of something can you show me where in the historical record where i'm just asking state? why you couldn't have one because i'm not aware of any having occurred that doesn't mean you couldn't have one you just claimed that it's possible. I didn't make a I'm claim. Oh, okay. Then we're not. No one is claiming here that an insurrection is. No, you are okay, making cool. a gotcha. claim. You're right. making a claim. On I'm your making four a points. positive claim that there could be a federal That's insurrection right. because because I have a historical record of there being statements about insurrections federally and historically. I've never had a statement about a state insurrection. I'm not aware of any of those. If yeah, you are but aware, you one not of those, being aware of any doesn't mean that it, the criteria could not apply to a state insurrection. Correct. That's correct, but we are talking yeah, that's about correct. an insurrection that happened on federal ground. So we're yeah, obviously talking I agree, about federal but your definition doesn't require federal anything. That's not okay, what your definition so we have no, requires. Okay, I think um, uh, if this is if if the only holdout you have is that your definition of resisting a particular law just means that you are breaking a law, then I think I'm satisfied. Oh no, no, it's not. Or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. This could be localized for non-localized. It can't be. Now this is a strange point that also gets brought up repeatedly. Is Destiny's definition doesn't say federal, and so Andrew points this out, but it's almost like Destiny wants to add federal to it and say that you can't, and he says that you can't do one against the state, but you absolutely can do a, 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 an insurrection against the state. In fact, it's in the United States Criminal Code. In Title 10 USC 251 of federal aid to state governments, we have Whenever there is an insurrection in any state against its government, the president may, upon a request of its legislator, blah, 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 and it's talking about getting, giving aid and sending in the military. So we have an official federal law that insurrections can happen against states. I don't know why Destiny feels the need to, to deny this. Well, actually, I kind of do. I think it's what I said before, is that he doesn't want to have to apply this to other things that he maybe is for, or maybe he thinks is more excusable, or maybe he's against them, but he just wants J6 to be in this special category. So he wants it to be a federal thing, because that's harder to find. It's harder to find things that have been a federal insurrection. It's easier to find things that would go in with the state insurrection definition. Hang on. 
Yeah. So you're 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 doing a classic kind of destiny bait and switch where you say in this particular case it would because that's what we're talking about. Okay, that's fair, but that doesn't mean that that's what the definition says. The definition itself does not say that it must be federal. It Ooh, doesn't you don't say even that. Agree with my de- what on. definition? It even doesn't to say here. that anywhere. What does or interfering with the course of a government proceeding minutes. mean? What does it mean? I think the I think the issue is that Andrew wants to make it far too narrow. But Destiny wants to make the definition far too broad. And that's why I think having something about severity in there or likelihood to succeed, I feel like you need that. I just feel like you have to have that in the definition. Otherwise, it will, it will be either far too narrow and nothing's an insurrection, or it's going to be far too broad and everything's an insurrection. I mean, another example is that there have been trans activists that have, been, that have come together to resist federal law about HRT and minors and then have been and have forcefully trespassed into federal buildings and then have to be removed. Like this would also meet all the criteria. They're trying to overthrow a state law. They're they're using threats of violence and it's the assemblage of people. It's planned out like all of this stuff is would be met. And I feel like again, we wouldn't want to call that an insurrection. I don't know. I don't know. I don't they, a state insurrection. I'm just not even aware of that even being a thing. I don't. I don't think I've ever well, heard. I don't of know. That. Okay, were so the DC the cops local? For, I'll put the clock for five minutes. The DC and we'll cops were federal. No, all of them were federal, eh? D- the District of Columbia is fe- is federal. So they yes, have no. Federal. They have no state police there at all. What state police would they have there? I don't know. I'm just asking. This is a classic Andrew debate tactic, and I just I see this all the time with him where he'll like ask a question as if it's like absurd clearly implying a different point but then when the person like if the person like gives an answer or pushes back then he retreats like oh i was i was just asking but it's clear in this clip that he wasn't just asking he was trying to like mock destiny on a point that he thought destiny got wrong and then when he realized oh shoot i don't know enough about this i don't know if they all were federal police or if they were state police i don't actually know this that he's like oh okay i was just asking and he'll just deny that he ever was implying anything which is ridiculous and i still can't exactly figure out the delineation point and i'm trying to and now to be fair to you it is nebulous i understand it's nebulous but it's not- i'm also not the one who's making the affirmative claim you are so you're saying that if a bunch of fucking dope smoking hippies wanted to resist the federal law of being able to smoke marijuana on federal land and they all showed up and they got stoned and then they started rioting that that would be a fucking insurrection if they went there with a common purpose they were trying to resist the uh implementation and execution of a particular law um yeah theoretically it could, well no yeah. they're just resisting right they're just resisting a law they're saying we're here to protest the fact man that we can't smoke weed on federal property man so they all grab their blunts and they start toking up and protest 10 seconds right and then they seconds. start a fire what do you have and i need some okay. stuff and kick so some stuff do you think is that, that hang on i just want to make sure you think it could that be yes. that would be yes. an insurrection the historical record it could be yes now i think this is a good example because again this is i mean this happens in canada too where well now before marijuana was federally legal people will go people would go on april 20th every year and they would smoke cannabis on the property of federal government buildings you know and now these are people that are assembling and i think now there's to destiny's point there's no planned, there's usually no planned violence, but violence can happen. And I think you could say with enough people, the threat of violence is there. And if things did escalate and then violence was carried out, then I think you would obviously say, well, the threat was there. They're going, they're trespassing onto federal property. They're intentionally resisting a specific law. Is this an insurrection? And Destiny, to remain consistent, agrees that, yeah, well, I guess it would be an insurrection. That's silly. That means in my city, before cannabis was made legal that means an insurrection happened every year on a specific date that's just like no one wants to no one wants to commit to that that's just ridiculous historically like there have been examples of things that were considered insurrections that were incredibly small in nature right i don't i don't know if anybody died at all in the whiskey rebellion i'm pretty sure everybody that got arrested for that was like acquitted um it was just people basically essentially uh protesting the the whiskey tax laws um this wasn't a massive deal that had like explosions and gunfire and deaths everywhere the whiskey rebellion wasn't a massive deal that had explosions and gunfire the whiskey rebellion was like 600 rebels that were very much shooting guns and and waging war against the united states the whiskey rebellion disney is acting like this is just like some minor protest people died in the whiskey rebellion 
I don't, this is like, if Andrew knew more about this, you would have jumped on this. But this was, this was not a small thing. I mean, 20 people were convicted of high treason and two people were sentenced to hang. And the only reason they didn't hang is because George Washington decided to pardon them with his presidential power. And this just shows that the pa these past insurrections were big deals. These were not... These were not small events that took place. These were a massive people waging war against the United States government. Three minutes. Yeah, well, it's really, it's really funny, this appeal to authority. Destiny grabs this entire nebulous definition from some guy that he respects on the Internet and then claims that this is some authoritative definition. This is the authoritative definition because I read it from some guy on the Internet. Oh, OK, great. Even though the courts themselves have not ruled on this and nobody was charged with insurrection. Nobody was charged. Again, one more time. Nobody charged with insurrection. Trump acquitted of inciting an insurrection, which, again, nobody was charged with. Talk about nebulous definition. He says, I'm playing word games. Meanwhile, he takes time today, all day, to assemble a four-point, uh, you know, kind of, this is my definition, completely based on some other guy on the Internet, which is crazy to me, right? This is Destiny's personal definition, personal definition of what this means, and it clearly fits Three of the criteria for rioting right off the gate. We only had an issue with two. And then when we apply these, and remember my opening statement. I said in my opening statement, this is going to become very broad, right? There's no way that we're not going to be able to call all sorts of things insurrections that clearly are not insurrections. Yeah, and I, I think this is the crux of the issue. It's just the Destiny's definition is simply too broad. Without some carve-in for waging war or likeliness to succeed or severity, it's just too many things would fall into the category of insurrection. So ultimately, who won the debate? I think both sides did okay. I think Destiny did slightly better in some areas and slightly worse in other areas. I would really like to know. I wish that Destiny knew that some people had been charged with seditious conspiracy because I think that would have changed the whole outcome of the debate. But then similarly, I wish that Andrew had more precise information on why it can apply to states, which it definitely can. I think Destiny would have to have a more specific narrow definition. So ultimately, I agree with Andrew more. I think Andrew probably has a stronger argument though, because at the end of the day, I think the initial burden is on Destiny. I would have liked if Andrew gave his own definition as well so that we could have actually had a maybe a slightly more productive conversation. But I think it's Destiny's burden to show that when it happened, and I think Andrew's counter that you'd have to call all of these things insurrection, and therefore insurrection is a silly word to use. I think that actually is a strong argument. I think if we want to say that certain people engaged in insurrection, I think that's an easier standard to hold to. I also think that Andrew's comment about how Trump didn't engage in insurrection, and, and, and his, his reasoning is that he was acquitted for it, that sounds maybe more important than it was. It, it was, you need a two, you need a two thirds Senate vote to convict, and they didn't quite reach two thirds. And everybody voted completely down party lines, at least, at least in terms of the people who thought he was not guilty. There wasn't a single Democratic senator that voted not guilty. So I'm not sure if the convictions really, you know, mean a ton anyway. Where I stand on the issue of was January 6th an insurrection, I think. I think that certain people tried to insurrect. I think that, at least from the data I've seen of some Proud Boy members and some Oath Keeper members, I do think that some of them tried to do an insurrection. I don't think Trump intended an insurrection, at least not January 6th. I think you could argue that the fake electorate scheme was like insurrection adjacent. I think that's fair. But I think the, I don't think there's enough evidence to show that Trump wanted violence to happen or the threat of violence. And I don't think that most people in the crowd wanted that. So now I guess if you say an insurrection is any time where anybody in the audience is trying to do it, like if we're going to say an insurrection can be six people, well then yeah, then I guess those six people did an insurrection. But I think that's a more salient thing as opposed to talking about did Trump do it? Did all the people do it? I think the question is, did some people do it? And I think the answer to that is yes. I think some people there did try to insurrect the government. But that was the debate. I'd be interested in knowing your thoughts in the comments. Was it an insurrection? Was it not? And who won this debate? I feel like I go back and forth. I feel like on some parts, I'm like, Destiny was presented a stronger case. But then in some cases, I think that Andrew presented a stronger case. But it's always hard to know what I'm adding to it because I'm adding the knowledge on Destiny's side that seditious conspiracy happened. And then I'm adding on Andrew's side the fact that state insurrections can happen. 
And I'm adding specific examples that Andrew didn't give, like the firebombing of courthouses and a Jordan Neely example and the Stonewall riots, right? So it's hard to know what I'm applying to the debate. And I guess in the end, it doesn't really matter who, who won or lost. But I just think that these are some strong points that both sides could have considered that could have like moved the conversation along in a better way. So maybe we see a part two. Maybe in a perfect world, Destiny and Andrew watch this video, critique it, and then use the information provided to then go back against one another and debate in a, in a rematch. That's the perfect world. But we'll see. We have one member missing. We have one member missing. We have one member missing.